hello guys welcome to my channel today i come with a new episode of the tips and tricks on cut fit fit formulation in today's video we are going to learn some important aspects regarding fit formulation and then today is a completely a new episode on catfish fit formulation so here are some of the things we are going to learn in today's video in today's video we are going to learn the best method of selecting raw materials for fit formulation we are going to learn the difference between conventional and non-conventional raw materials we are going to learn how to replace conventional raw materials that are expensive with the non-conventional ones that are cheaper we are also going to learn the importance and the contribution of each fit ingredient during fit formulation and then today we are going to understand the crude protein of each of these ingredients so but before we go or but before we dive into today's video if you are new to this channel don't forget to subscribe to this channel hit the bell notification icon and if you are getting value from my videos please give this video a like and also leave a comment in the comment section of this video and also if you want to learn the tips and tricks of fit formulation and all the secrets you need to know on production of quality fit using cheaper ingredients and also getting maximum result you can go to the description of this video and download our catfish fit formulation blueprint don't miss it don't miss it i repeat that is very important so now let's look at this uh our today's topic one after another as this will help in producing quality feed we said we are going to look at the best method of selecting raw materials for feed formulation how do we effectively select raw materials during the formulation of our fish feed for any cost effective feed formulation the raw materials to be used are selected on the following basis one we are going to select our ingredient on the basis of their nutritional value that is what each ingredient contributes on the basis of its carbohydrate content its protein content its fat and oil content its vitamins its minerals and its water content that is we are going to consider all the six classes of food during the formulation now all these particular classes of food should have to be present for any feed to be called a feed and for any feed to be called a quality feed and for any feed to be called a feed that is expected to convert to flesh and give us maximum maximum weight of fish required at the end of the production cycle or during our own harvest the next thing we are going to look at this particular raw materials on the basis of their crude protein and then what is crude protein crude protein that is the amount of protein in each of these feed ingredients and the value of each ingredient crude protein is established from the laboratory proximate analysis so it is not something that you need to bother yourself with it is already an established figures that you need just to use it appropriately so you don't need to look for them i will provide you with it in the course of this video so i will give you the crude protein of some of these ingredients so as to know or to have an insight of what is crude protein or the crude protein content of this ingredient so now we are going to select our ingredient again on the basis of the cost of the raw material for us to cut down cost of feed we must have to use cost effective raw materials for us to produce cheaper feed that is in the process of producing our own feed if we use raw materials that are very expensive and then our final product that is the feed that we have formulated also will be very expensive and that is what we don't want we want to produce cheaper feed that can give us maximum result using cheaper raw materials or using cheaper ingredients the next thing during our selection of feed ingredient we are going to select our feed ingredient on the basis of the availability of the raw materials that is it depends on the location of the farmer 
Anytime you want to formulate your own feed, you should always consider the availability of the raw materials you want to use in your own feed formulation. So there are some of these materials that may be available in some of the areas and then there are some of these raw materials that are not available in some particular areas. So it is very important that you consider which of these raw materials are present in your own location. So you must have to consider its availability. So you don't need to be walking around or traveling a far distance, spending a lot of money trying to get these particular ingredients. It will add to your own cost. So these are the basis in which we are to select our feed ingredient. And it is very important for any cost effective feed production. So the next thing we are going to look at, we are going to look at the major feed ingredients to be considered first during feed formulation. So we have our carbohydrate, which is our energy source. We have our own protein, which helps in bodybuilding and maintenance. So there is, and these two major feed ingredients can be easily identified based on their crude protein content. That is, we can be able to differentiate this major feed ingredient, that is the carbohydrate and the protein, based on their crude protein content. And this is the phenomenon. I said any of the feed ingredient that has a crude protein level of less than 20 is a carbohydrate source. That is, it's a carbohydrate material. And then any of the feed ingredient that has a crude protein level of greater than 20%, is a protein source that is is a protein raw material so that is how we categorize these two major ingredients based on their own crude protein and then this carbohydrate and protein sources can also be chosen based on the important proximate result that is to say carbohydrate source will be chosen based on the metabolizable energy and then also the protein source will be chosen based on the presence of amino acid that is contained in the protein source that ate in fast growth of the fish. So this is the basis we are going to take when it comes to the selection of our carbohydrate as well as our own protein. These things are very, very important. The next thing we are going to look at is we are going to look at the difference between conventional and non-conventional feed ingredients. Looking at the economic crisis, and then the economic crisis have impact negatively on the profitability of fish farming, especially in Nigeria and some African countries. And farmers now have no option than to resort to using non-conventional feed ingredient. Here is the list of the conventional feed ingredient, and these feed ingredients are what we call the conventional feed ingredient. And you know, I cannot be able to exhaust all these ingredients in the course of this video. That is why I urge each and every serious fish farmer to check the description of this video where you can have available information where you can tap on your hands on and then achieve massive result and massive success. So you can download our catfish fish formulation blueprint in the description of this video and other important guide. So we said the conventional feed ingredient, this are the ingredients that human also prepare and eat them so we human beings will also eat these particular ingredients but these ingredients now are very expensive and we have to replace it with a non-conventional sources to cut the cost of feed production that is to say currently our major challenges is on the conventional feed ingredients now the seems or the tend to be very very expensive so it is important that we try as much as possible to find out the replacement of these conventional feed ingredients. So now, these are some of them. You can get as many as these feed ingredients in the description of this video when you have our own blueprint for catfish for formulation and other important resources for fish farming. So these are just few I have mentioned here. So we have the non-conventional feed ingredients too. And then there are also few that I mentioned here because we cannot uh, be mentioning them all here. It will consume our own time. 
So now these are the byproducts or the effluent of the conventional feed ingredients that we use. These are materials that humans don't eat, but we use it to prepare feed for our own fish. So these are the non-conventional feed ingredients. They are like just byproducts or the effluents. But in this one, we have the mess often, which is the effluent of the mess. We have blood meal that is that is uh, taken from an abattoir. We have the wheat offal, which is very important. We have maggot, we have rice bran, poultry feather meal, and cassava peas, and the rest of them. We have many of them. So like the maggot now, uh, people are into production production of maggots. And then if you want me to make a video on how to go about producing your own maggot, I can also do that. But it is very, very important as you go and check the description of this video. I have explained step by step in our own blueprint on how to produce an odorless maggots, a very good one that is used during feed formulation. So the next thing we are going to look at is how to replace conventional raw materials that are expensive with the non-conventional raw materials that are cheaper. So we have some of these ingredients. I have just mentioned few for the sake of this video. We have our cassava pills, which is the energy source. We have our wheat offal, we have our maize offal. And then our protein sources, we have the blood meal, we have the maggots, we have the poultry rumen, that is the viscera, we have the poultry feather meal. So they are also very important. These are our own protein sources. So there is no how I can exhaust all these particular ingredients in just uh, a single video. So this is how we go about this as a result of the financial or uh, the economic crisis of the feed ingredient. I just mentioned a few of them of these particular ingredients, the energy and the protein sources that we can use to replace those particular expensive feed ingredients. So the next thing we are going to look at is the importance and the contribution of each feed ingredient during the formulation. So each of these particular ingredients in this unit, I'm going to take about the nutritional contribution of some of these ingredients in the feed, as well as the value they provide after taking by the fish. Here, I will talk about the conventional as well as the non-conventional feed ingredients. So here are some of the few ingredients and the major ones or the important one I have just mentioned. We said first we have uh, the mess offal. What is the importance of the mess offal in the feed? We said this is a byproduct of a mess or a mess effluent. This is a carbohydrate source. It provides energy to the fish. And then we have the wheat offal, which is also an effluent of wheat. It is a carbohydrate source. This is chiefly used because of its crude fiber to help in digestion. It is very important when incorporated in the feed of our own fishes. The next thing we are going to look at is the fish meal or the soya beans, that is our protein sources. These are protein sources that help in body building as well as body maintenance in fish. But soya is always chosen in terms of uh, plant protein over granite cake because of its availability of essential amino acids that help in fast growth of that particular fish. So now the next thing is the granite cake which is used as a source of our own fat to the fish. And I have talked, it is also part of uh, our own sources of protein. But we take majorly the soya beans. The next thing we are going to look at is we are going to look at the, the bone meal. The bone meal provides minerals to the fish which aid in strengthening their bones. It supplied phosphorus and calcium to the fish. The next thing is the fish premix. This provides vitamins to the fish. It is like a mixture of vitamins. The next thing we are going to look at, it is a synthetic amino acid called methionine that aids in the first growth of the fish and helps the fish to produce more eggs, especially for catfish breeders that are into hatchery. So the next thing we are going to look at is the DCP, which is a dicalcium phosphate. It also boosts the immune system of the fish and also aids in strengthening their own bones. We are going to look at, the last thing we are going to look at is the lysine, which is also uh, like a methionine. It is a growth booster that aids in fast growth of the fish. So these particular ingredients are major and important ingredients and their particular role they play 
during feed formulation or during when the fish take the feed that is incorporated using these particular ingredients. These are some of the importance of uh, fish ingredients. We cannot be able to exhaust the nutritional contribution of all these ingredients in just one form in just one video. That is why I recommend every serious fish farmer to download our catfish formulation blueprint in the description of this video, as this blueprint will help you a lot in producing quality and cost effective feed. So it is very important that you go and download this particular blueprint with another so the next thing we are going to look at here is understanding the crude protein of these ingredients as i have said earlier that this crude protein are already established figures from the proximate analysis from the laboratory so you don't need to bother yourself about this particular crude protein content of each of these ingredients as i have promised Right from the beginning of this video that I will provide you with the crude protein of each of these ingredients. So here are some of the crude protein of the few ingredients that we are going to use in the course of our own formulation. These are like the plant protein sources. You see the soya bean meal, we have the cottonseed meal, we have the sunflower meal and the G and C. Each of their each with their own crude protein, their energy, calcium, lysine, and methionine content in them. So the next thing is we are going to look at like the animal protein, and then each of these that is the meat meal, the blood meal, the feather meal, poultry meal, and the fish meal. Each of these has their own particular crude protein, their energy level, their fat, their calcium slash phosphorus, methionine, and the lysine content. So these are already established figures from the laboratory. As I have promised, I provide them in this particular video. This is what you are going to use. But it is very important that you check the description of this video as you have lots of information on the crude protein content of each of these ingredients, including the non-conventional one we have discussed earlier on, as this will help you to formulate your own quality and cost-effective feed. Thank you. See you in the next video.